Hey, what's going on there, folks? Welcome back here to a Friday night. It is the Earthmaster out here. June 7th, 2024, 7 11 p.m. California time, 9 11 p.m. here in the great state of Texas. 4.1 is the latest earthquake activity there on the globe, uh, situated over around the Japan area. We'll get to that here in just a little bit. Right now we're looking at departing sunspot 3697 throwing out a near X flare, long duration M flare event down here on the southwestern quadrant of the sun. Coming in right now, you can see that uh, picture right here. Let me pull this up a little bit. Beautiful image. Of course that is that sunspot area that uh, has been quite active here recently. And of course that is the culprit last time it was out here around the earth facing side of the sun for the uh, uh, producing all those X flares and subsequent CMEs and all the aurora activity so 3697 here much further out on the southwestern limb producing a near X flare if we look at the chart here you can see this coming in right now peaked out at an M 9.7 down here very close to an X flare it is long duration it does look like potentially we could see some type of CME activity associated with this strong flare, but due to the location of the sunspot here, it will not be earth directed. But uh, goodness, a departing sunspot or a departing uh, flare from this sunspot out here. Pretty impressive there. Uh, so we'll continue to watch that. It looks like there's some type of uh, prominence eruption occurring over here on the western limb. That's actually quite impressive there. I'm going to I'm actually gonna screenshot. Uh, I'm gonna screenshot that real quick. Uh, let's see here, cause it's uh, that is something you don't see too often there. Beautiful eruption of plasma out on the western limb. It does look like maybe subsequently at the same time as or popped up here subsequently at the same time as this near X flare. Again, that's facing away from the Earth. And would not it will not be geo effective here. Goodness, <laughs> quite uh, quite the view I must say. So there's our radio blackout being observed here across the sunlit side of the Earth, centered over well right around the Japan area, kind of where we're seeing the latest earthquake activity showing up there on the globe. 4.1 it looks like that one's a pretty deep earthquake, 400 kilometers deep there into the looks like the Izu Trench here. All right, so we'll check that out here in just a second as far as earthquake activity goes. No major wars in the forecast. We did see a little bit of elevated uh, KP index here earlier in the day. This popped up out of the blue. More than likely, this was associated with a similar prominence eruption there days ago, uh, but from the, uh, the uh, eastern limb when that thing kicked off. I don't know if Kevin's got it up here, but uh, yeah, kind of a surprise. Uh, geomagnetic storm didn't really produce any type of significant auroras and of course we've toned down since then no major auroras in the forecast for now and uh, the activity associated with this ongoing flare right now will be uh, directed away from earth but uh, I gotta get one more look at that beautiful long duration flare taking place there all right so earthquake activity let's see what we got here we did have some interesting movement up here into Northern California now. If you watch all my videos here, I've been talking about this uh, ongoing sequence of tremor activity up here in Northern California. Let me bring that up first. Uh, doesn't look like we got anything updating today. It may be too early here um, as far as today's activity goes. Yesterday, looks like we've seen 436 epicenters of tremor into the northern california area now this is not volcanic activity or earthquake activity but pressure or the slippage here between the two plates uh, in the slow slip type of event occurring roughly around 45 kilometers deep here into the subduction zone of the cascadia now this is just not one day event this has been going on for probably about a week and a half or so and we've come up on um, and this goes back further than that. I probably should pull up. Let's go to 
Let's do that, and then uh, the 28th to the... Hold on a second here. 28th to June... Right here. So this goes back a, almost two weeks. And see what we got for a total tally number here. Uh, goodness, look at that. Well over 3,500 epicenters of trimmer. Again, most of this is positioned into the Northern California area, underneath this area. One may think, well, what does it all mean? Well, ultimately, when you get this slow slippage going on between the two plates here, we're looking at accumulated strain upstream here. And that strain is what is building up here for the next giant mega quake out here in the Cascadia subduction zone. This 4.3 came in uh, this morning right smack dab on the Cascadia subduction zone, the mega thrust area. And we haven't really seen too much earthquake activity specifically like that uh, recently. Over the past week, week and a half, since the ongoing tremor event has been um, taking place, we've seen periods here of deeper movement uh, upstream here from the tremor, a little bit further south here than today's earthquake. Uh, you know, for example, all these little earthquakes out here 23, 20 kilometers, 28, all indicative there of um, stress building up from this from the uh, tremor activity which is occurring. Further over here on the map, which would be further underneath and into the subduction zone here of the Cascadia. So, got to watch this. You know, it's this is more localized here to this area and it's possible we could see a just a partial rupture here of the Cascadia subduction zone and there's been you know historical records of full ruptures and partial ruptures and that would include just this area down here where we're seeing all the elevated trimmer activity take place here tonight so uh, something's going on gotta watch that pretty closely I think as long as the trimmer activity is continuing obviously there's that threat of maybe seeing something bigger happen here across the Cascadia subduction zone and you know this ain't going to be just a little five or six pointer. We can see a magnitude up to about an 8.1, maybe even an 8.2 or three here uh, in this area. If we just see a full, uh, if we just see a partial rupture. Now a full rupture uh, from the entire length here. I've been out in the sun a little bit too much today. It's, it's cooking out here in the Gulf Coast. Uh, that would be over a nine pointer up here if we've seen an entire rupture here of the Cascadia subduction zone. But this is quite interesting here. So we're adding further strain with more and more trimmer taking place here. Keep an eye on the Cascadia here. Of course, you know, this ain't a big earthquake, right? Definitely not a big earthquake, but it's right smack dab on a major subduction zone upstream from where we've had over 3,500 epic uh, 3, epicenters of trimmer occurring down into the subduction zone. Keep an eye on that area. Uh, further down south into Southern California, we've got one little spike of an earthquake here near Corona, 1.4, coming in just off the Elsinore Fault. Aside from that, no major swarming taking place out there for now. Uh, movement around, around the Long Valley Supervolcano, just outside the caldera, it looks like. A handful of smaller quakes, including a 3.2 down into the Mount Tom area. Uh, aside from that, really not uh, seeing too much earthquake activity inland. Just general small microquake activity out here across the Las Vegas area. Northwest of Las Vegas. Pacific Northwest, a handful of smaller quakes. Uh, let's see out here across the states. The oil fields out here look pretty quiet right now. Only seeing about five earthquakes out here around the Pecos, Texas area. New Madrid seismic zone there. Smaller earthquake from this morning. Uh, let's see what else we got. The big island of Hawaii. What's going on out there? Got some earthquakes swarming going on. Is what's happening? And it does look like most of this activity halted here a couple hours or so. Well, within the last hour or so, some twos and whatnot occurring just on the southern flank here of the Kilauea volcano, and also here across the northern edge of the Helena slump. And um, you know, it's, it's a dynamic situation that is taking place down there. And we're just kind of watching it, seeing how it plays out in terms of the inflation and earthquake activity 
following the short-lived eruption there on the southwestern uh, rift zone of Kilauea Volcano. Currently sitting at a yellow in advisory as of um, this actually shows uh, today's date. Deformation data. Let's see what we got for inflation. Maybe, there we go. Still going up. Look at that. Past two days of showing continued inflation out here. We're not quite there to the level that we've seen prior to this most recent eruption, which was a pretty short-lived erup uh, eruption, about 10, about 10 hours or so on the southwest rift zone. But we're halfway there. So we'll watch that. We're continuing to go up. Chances are we'll see uh, another eruption take place here soon, somewhere. Wherever there is earthquake activity that's uh, happening, Right now, most of that movement's down south here, so we'll keep an eye on things for sure out here. All right, uh, the rest of the world out here, there's that uh, more recent earthquake here into the Izu Trench, 400 kilometers deep for 4.1. Aside from that, uh, other earthquake activity striking out here along the plate boundary here between the Philippine plate, uh, Filipino plate and the uh, Pacific Plate here to the east. That is a plate boundary. Major subduction zone. Nothing going on in Taiwan right now. Uh, further down into the south here. Looks like most of the activity from this morning or yesterday. Look on the globe here. does show uh, some of that earthquake activity today, but nothing going on in New Zealand, at least uh, according to this model here, which I believe is just a USGS map here for now on the globe. Uh, let's see, some movement down here across the South Atlantic area, it looks like. The most recent one shown a 4.7 on the Southwest Indian Ridge. A couple other earthquakes down here in the, uh, the plate boundary here. The 5.4. Uh, let's see, Alaska area, really nothing showing up here for the most part, aside from microquake activity. If we pull up the 2.5 map and above, well, that brings the majority of the quakes there down to some only uh, looks like some twos and threes going on out there but we'll continue to watch things folks that's for sure uh, live stream is up and running at home it went down luckily for me I'm able to access it remotely thousands of miles away here and get the live stream back up and running not gonna keep me down always got a plan I'm always one step ahead of the uh, potential stream going down <clears throat> All right, uh, let me double check here the solar ham site. Coming back down to an M5, but that, goodness, that's a long duration event. And that is no doubt an impressive feature out there across the western limb of the sun. All right, let's check out weather outlook here real quick for today. Looks like uh, still seeing some Severe weather potential up there across Kansas and Nebraska area. 2% chance there across Kansas of tornado wind and maybe a little bit of hail threat out there as well. As you can see there on the map, that's for today and tonight. Uh, on the day for Saturday, for the weekend here, there's a slight risk up around the western Kansas area. Got a 2% possibility there in the green zones. Wind and some hail threats out there as well. Uh, aside from that, Really no major tornado threats out there that I can see here in the forecast. Um, aside from that, folks, we're still down here into the uh, Gulf Coast of Texas. And uh, it's, it wasn't too bad. It was about 90 degrees here on the coast. But, of course, you got that humidity and the high dew points making it feel much, much hotter. And it, uh, it wasn't too bad. It had a nice... Day out uh, swimming in the Gulf here a little bit, relaxing, getting some R&R &R going on here with Missy Mimi's. Say hello, Missy Mimi's. How's it going, guys? Out here in the background. I think we're ready for bed. <laughs> Not even joking. Swimming out there, having fun. It's actually kind of draining. Uh, a little bit of earthquake activity here in Yellowstone. A couple spikes here. Really nothing major. No huge swarm. Uh, the main thing right now, I think, is keeping an eye on the Cascadia. Continued tremor activity, right? Uh, all these trimmer counts here adding strain if anything that adds further tension strain built up here in this area 
All right, uh, let's see what else we got here, folks. I think that's about it. Have a good one. We'll catch you guys back out here in the morning. Um, trying out a few restaurants around here. Appreciate the uh, the suggestions there that were coming in on seafood and Mexican restaurants out here. Mexican Mexican food re restaurants. But I think I need to sleep. I need a pillow and a blanket because I'm going to crank up the AC and probably drop it down to about 60 degrees here in the room. And uh, I sleep better when it's cold, trust me. Have a good one, guys. Enjoy the Friday night. Please stay safe out there. We'll catch you guys back out here for the Saturday morning update. Take care.